Hello there, it's Josh here from Racing to Profit. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Um, it's been a little while since I've done one of these videos. I thought it would be a good opportunity to whiz through Chelmsford's card. I say that um, one of my members, uh, long-term members and now syndicate owner across um, all three, I think, uh, Doug and good friend, and he lives in Chelmsford and he's off to the races this evening and he asked me if I would have a look through uh, which I'm always happy to do because it's um, hopefully helps well hopefully adds to his evening I should say and of course um, gives me some content to chat about uh, on the blog um, as always the usual caveats um, well no the first thing I should say actually uh, if I'm speaking too slowly for you do click the cog in the bottom right hand corner and you can increase the playback speed and whiz through this video a bit quicker if you wish um the main caveat of course is you can only do so much whizzing uh, through a card i've probably spent uh kind of an hour or so um and there's quite a few races here to get through as you can see uh, it's a seven race card um and yeah, there's only so much you can do uh, when looking at a race for kind of uh, five to ten minutes. Um, but with excellent tools like Gigi's Gold, which I'm using in front, which uh, does help save time and pulls loads of information into one place, um, it does make it a bit easier. Uh, but hopefully I may say something or highlight a horse or a race uh, which um, may interest you, may spark an interest, or may indeed lead you to taking a further dip into said race. Um, you can always go into more detail. Uh, I have landed on one horse in particular in each race uh, kind of pretty quick. Uh, the list of those horses uh, is above uh, the link to this video. Um, uh, if you're watching this uh, via the email, if you're on YouTube, uh, the horses are listed in the comments uh, in the description, I should say, um, below. Um, so with any luck, yeah, hopefully it highlights a few horses of interest and... Um, if you're new to Gigi's Gold or even if you're a regular user, uh, I may kind of touch on some things you uh, will find useful or at least highlight uh, the tools. So this is uh, race one at Chelmsford this evening at 550 Um as usual, a mix of uh, class five and class six uh, races and handicaps. Um, given my eyes these days, generally focus on uh, staying chases over three miles and further and kind of class three above. I suppose races like this are a bit away from my uh, norm and my comfort zone, but I will do my best to highlight something useful. Um, despite those caveats, I should add of time and kind of rushing through instinct uh, is never a bad thing either in this game. Um, my through the cards usually highlight highlight uh, two to three winners on a kind of uh, six seven race card and obviously depending on the odds uh, they can break even or edge into small profit and I'm on a hat trick uh, at the last two through the cards I've found two winners a time and um, well decent enough profit uh, so far on those uh, so yeah let's crack on we've got the 550 at Chelmsford um, yeah, class six, one mile handicap. It's a four-year-old. We're open to horses four-year-old and over. So we don't have any thoroughly unexposed three-year-olds to worry about in this race. Of course, they get weight for age and they're naturally more lightly raced and open to further improvement from one run to the next. Uh, the first thing to look at, I suppose, when you're looking at a dashboard like this, there's always loads of information um, and superb information with Gigi's Golden. The more you get used to it, uh, the more you can kind of zone in. I do like the train of form indicators, and by that I mainly mean these green 4s and 13s, um, and these little report angle uh, ticks. If I just click this against Dean Ivory, uh, this indicates the horse has some hot form from a race uh, 60 days ago, uh, more so the trainer stats in the last 30 days. Now I can click the trainer icon, trainer form here, um, Many of you watching this may uh, think trainer of form is important. I always think it is a decent way in and there's different ways you can judge trainer form. Uh, on GGs here, we're looking at percentages uh, win placed in the last 14, 30 days and some other useful information here, uh, especially the percentage of rivals beat and anything over 50%. And the closer you get to kind of uh, one uh, from 0 0.5 to one, uh, the bigger that number, the better. So uh, that indicates... Um, Dean Ivory's horses generally are finishing nearer the front of their races than the back, uh, which is never a uh, bad thing. Always a positive three from eight, four places the last 14 days. Um, so they have hit a rich vein of form and a decent profit if you've landed on some of those to 59 uh 
SP. Um, yeah, 59 points of starting price. So we know Dean Ivory's in form. He's got a couple of runners down here. So the Dean Ivory runners are automatically of interest. And if you switch over to the market, you'll see they're actually first and second favourite. But the yard are flying along. Uh, you've then got these other kind of red and green symbols um which are explained there if you hover over them um but the trainers form here for example uh, at the course um in the last year and last uh, five years uh you know three percent strike rate uh, doesn't mean they can't have winners of course uh, you've got uh, trainers supposedly out of form um in those situations you can look at the play stats uh, some of these horses may have run well but again uh, you might put a kind of red flag against that kind of thing having said that this horse will now probably hack up of course um the same with ivan Vitado down here um they could be going better uh, so if you look yeah if you're looking for a quick way in what you're doing when i'm doing kind of these through the car uh, to try and kind of uh, zone in on certain horses and exclude certain horses you can kind of use trainer form um, knowing of course you may miss something Richard Hughes has a decent record enough at the track uh, and you could dig in and there's no doubt some angles uh, for him within his Chelmsford runners given the overall strength of those numbers at the course um, I should highlight these stats here uh, yeah, at Chelmsford with his first runners in a handicap, 6 from 21, 8 places. Um, decent profit to starting price uh, and the trainer and jockey, Richard Hughes, Finley Marsh, at the course in the last five years. Um, so even if I do not mention a winner today by flicking through some of these stats... Um, Hopefully you will, uh, or you can note those down, of course, if you like stats, trainer angles, uh, different bits and pieces, do note down some of those, pause the video, uh, because they will be useful moving forwards. But that's the kind of information at a click of the button in this excellent piece of kit. Um, as an aside, I did look at the Richard Hughes horse because of those stats. He hasn't shown anything at all here. He is up two furlongs to eight, uh, to one mile, um, now into a handicap for the first time. Maybe we will see a different horse. He's around 25 to one. Um, the horse I'm going to zone in on. So uh, that's just a few touching on a few things there. There's uh, speed ratings down here and uh, Matt licenses of Dr. Peter May. Um, they do do well, uh, especially over sprint trips. And again, um, a guide, a way in, uh, useful information. But sometimes horses loitering down here uh, do bolt up. So um, not the be and all end all. You've got the top speed figures from the Racing Post. So you've got all the Racing Post data here as well, the Racing Post ratings. Uh, and when you click on a horse, uh, if I just click on Laurentia and I won't go through this much depth on uh, each race, I will zone in on the horse I've landed on. But just to show you some of the thinking, um, you get yeah some of the racing post ratings achieved down here, top speed figures, etc. So on and so on, uh, so on and so forth, I should say. Um, instant experts. So this looks at the horse's form against race conditions. Um, you know, more amber and more green, the better. Uh, because it is a handicap, because it's home to horse old, uh, age four and older on the flat or weather, um, this kind of dashboard can be more useful because you have more form to go on, you have more handicap form to go on, and you don't need to be scared of so many unexposed horses who may be doing something different, who may not have ran at the trip before. Having said that, that Richard Hughes horse having his first run of the handicap, first run of the course, first run of the distance. Now, they are reasons for the, why the horse may improve. Of course, the horse also has to prove uh, that they handle the track and they have to prove that they stay. Um, but, of course, you're building in those knowns, those unknowns, what they've achieved, what they haven't achieved within the odds and making a subjective judgment on that basis. Um, so, and, of course, many races are won by horses doing something different or improving for race conditions or the pace set up or whatever so on and so forth the jockey um etc uh so but what i'm going to say or highlight is we've got this little bit of kit down the um these tools i should say toggles you can sort all this data which underpins this dashboard here by any number of things here um all the different race codes uh all races and handicaps only so I'm just going to click on all weather only because obviously this is the all weather and you'll start to see some orange uh, appear or some amber um, now if I just click on handicaps well Irish time is interesting although rather exposed but four pounds below his last winning mark so from a handicap perspective um, yes the last winning official ratings here this is today's official rating so 
against uh, uh and that's those with ratings especially on the all weather etc um or with winning ratings in handicaps uh all weather handicaps so uh iris times yeah is four pounds below uh his last winning mark so that might be interesting to note he is more exposed but he might find a race maybe it is today um Dark Chris is two pounds below. Uh, Laurentia, uh, who is the one I'm focused on uh, and the one I kind of fancy each way at five to one, kind of uh, four places. Um, 14 pounds below, highest winning mark, has one off 60 before. If I just click the handicap here, um, maybe you'll see on this instant, uh, instant expert dashboard why I've zoned in on the Dean Ivory filly here. Um, now this is uh, winning. This is winning form against these criteria. So the going standard, the class, class six, the course challenge with the distance one mile, the field size, 12 to 15 runners. Uh, some horses like to dominate smaller fields. Some horses um, prefer the uh, stronger pace, true gallop. You can get in larger fields. They like the competition. They like being behind horses. They like running past and through horses. That gets their competitive juices going. Some horses uh, get claustrophobic, hate big fields, prefer small fields, prefer dominating, being the front etc so all this kind of information here can be useful as well um and yes yeah, so you can see why i kind of like this dean ivory uh filly here on the place stats there's obviously some more green uh and amber um as class six handicaps go you could say this is fairly competitive i suppose um channel packet down here very well handicapped uh and so on uh so you know you can absorb note you might uh, be interested in a different horse we use this as a way in uh, to take a further analysis if you like diving in uh, for many more minutes into class six not to 55s on the all weather uh, i can't say i do necessarily um pace is always important um and uh with the excellent gg's pace maps you can see uh with these kind of race conditions field sizes how you set it up where the best place to be is and you can see that being leading or racing prominently um is uh, generally the place to be over this course and distance although of course it's not impossible to win from being held up and that depends on the pace as well will they go too hard etc now there isn't a load of front runners on here which um will it be falsely run uh will that lead to strange results um but you can you know take a look and see uh will a jockey uh take the ball by the horns and try and dictate and so on um now laurentia has raced prominently now the final piece of jigsaw of course if you have time is to go and watch some replays um which i did do of the last race of this filly um hasn't been running in handicaps these have all been classified races uh, off 46 clearly no world beater uh, on kind of recent form maybe regressing as she gets a bit older um but uh, do watch this race there was no starting stalls here because the starting team was stuck in traffic um so it was a kind of flag start um was sent off 14 to 1 held up cold out the back not off a strong pace cut through them like a knife through warm butter um or a hot knife i should say through butter um cut through them uh and uh made up a load of ground from the back and was staying on jockey didn't go overly high so jockey was sat very still and very motionless off the bend uh, while the front two got a run some of that form has been frank this then what feature here you can see how many horses have run out of the races since and what they've done you can click on that race if you so wish and take a deeper dive into um what's gone on so one step on beyond did win another classified race on the next star so that is franking the form uh, to some degree which is no bad thing especially at this class six level um into a handicap off 46 you can dive into the horse's form a bit more hasn't ever done much on the uh, flat turf four from four, 29 clearly is open to attack from something making its way up the handicap rating scale rather than having hit their peak like she has and is now dropping um so obviously different types and profiles of horses dip, win different types of races i would generally want to edge towards the unexposed still going up possibly going up through the rankings uh, side um but obviously horses like this win handicaps like this all the time. Uh, this Lingfield so has one off 60. Um, so the handicap mark in theory shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the other thing I wanted to highlight, um, the course form. Uh, yeah, is one from 8-3 place around here. Uh, has one um, at the course of 53. Uh, so it's still kind of £6, £7 uh, uh, even below that mark. So um, yeah, for all those reasons stated, I suppose, uh, the yard form form that instant expert the horse's suitability against the race conditions in this handicap uh, being well handicapped on that form course and distance winner having watched that last race and thinking that was an eye-catching run i'm hoping george rook 
um, who is, uh, well, possibly having his first y- uh, ride for the yard um, and uh, first ride on this horse, um, of course. Uh, so uh, that is, I was just going to click the jockey. Um, so that's a question also. Um, uh whether or not uh, he'll get on with her uh, etc and the trainers thinking behind booking him but in any case um he uh does fine at the course uh, and uh, is a tidy little rider so hopefully no issues there but she will hopefully bounce out and sit a bit handier which she used to do on some of those wins um and not be so far back uh and hopefully uh, runs a big race if she builds on last time out and runs to the best of her abilities. I will be surprised if she is out of the first um, four famous last words. Uh, but yeah, kind of 11 to 2, 5 to 1. Um, and may actually beat the stable mate. Um, who, I should add, is uh, totally unproven over eight furlongs. Has to prove he stays. Um, which might be the reason for opposing the favourite. And that's another way in short price-ish favourite. Is there a reason to op- oppose them? Well, has stamina to prove. So uh, maybe there's that. So, um, yes, uh, it'll be interesting if there's any money for this Richard Hughes one, given those handicap starts, uh, stats, etc. Uh, 20 to 1, 18 to 1. Um, will he... Uh, take a massive step forward needs to on recent efforts but maybe hasn't been fit maybe will be transformed for eight furlong and running in the class six handicap for the first time um so possibly an interesting outsider uh but i did like um dean ivory's other one in this uh, for those reasons stated so that's the 550 820 uh, i'll keep this pretty short and sweet competitive to a point i didn't really think a reason to oppose the richard hughes horse here um now hughes does very well uh, at the course last time out winner um if i just focus on the horse uh two from um two from six five places uh, at the track uh, including some decent close efforts at a higher level uh, as he has had at other tracks he's actually gone well in uh, a couple of class twos um i didn't see a reason uh, to oppose him if i'm being honest uh Richard Hughes does fine with last time out winners, 20% win strike rate. This horse was wearing first time blinkers uh, last time. Um, you could maybe argue the form hasn't exactly worked out too much. I did like the fact he posted a massive racing post rating or relatively big against his mark there. When they're kind of £10 pounds, uh, or 10 points plus higher, um, I tend to take uh, more note, I suppose. He's up to 93. He has run well off this sort of mark before and in class twos. Um, there's every reason I think the blinkers will keep working. Uh, he can uh, track the pace or he can make all he's versatile. Um, I just didn't really see a reason to oppose. Uh, I thought the rest of them had the odd question for one reason or another. If I just click the instant expert here, uh, you may see why as well. If I just put the win on the all weather, uh, you will see, um, I suppose, why I think he's interesting as well. He ticks every box, which... Uh, lots of the other horse in here have to do um so even yeah he is the only horse in here with a uh, all weather win at a class one to three handicap level so i suppose he's got the proven class um you could go on all codes just to open that up xl power has done that at uh, on the turf uh, as so has river dawn done that on the grass um, you can click i should add within these instant expert lines um you can click uh the different bits and pieces and actually see where that form was achieved so these drop downs come down here you can see that windsor uh, eight fell on good to firm haydock eight fell on good to firm um the course win, though, of course, that was a class four handicap. Um, so it's got the class from the turf and the course form. So hard to say XL Power doesn't have the class. But if I just tick on the conditions we have today, all weather handicap. Now you've got some melody of life. Um, totally unexposed when there's these blank totally unexposed in all weather handicaps it hasn't run in these conditions before liberation hasn't run in these conditions Bowland park not many goes in certain conditions certainly the course etc that is a reason for why they obviously have that to prove but uh repeating a point from um the first race but of course uh 
could be a reason for possible improvement and why they may step forward and again you're building that and judging it into the odds but in terms of those that have been there and done it and Carabana therefore is open to attack from something maybe more lightly raced or more unexposed in conditions but Carabina is the solid been there and done it one um, who has run well at class two level who has run well off this sort of mark and the blinkers may well eke out a bit more improvement he was did that a shade cosily come the line um some of his other form is decent now when you're at the races you do kind of want winners i suppose um uh he's kind of 11 to 4 3 to 1 uh, lots of money in the last hour for melody of life which may be interesting um but in any case uh yeah um Carabana, uh, I thought, was uh, solid for a three-to-one shot. His form actually ties in with a few other pits and pieces. Interesting mother, uh, money for River Dawn at this point. Uh, might be worth noting. We shall see. Um, uh, is unplaced a couple of times at the track, but very close, I suppose, at Chelmsford there. Is his first run in 334 days, which I suppose would be a decent training performance. Uh, the Paul and Ollie Cole team do get winners after 60 plus days, but as you can see, not many. Three from 62, these stats are from the last two years. Um, so yeah, you've got all that kind of information we're kind of computing, uh, working out and working out what to do with. Um, but I've been talking for plenty long enough uh, and I'm only on race two. Let's whiz on to the 650. And uh, a few things to know here. There's that trainer form. I suppose you can zone in on the Roger Varian form, uh, the Tom Clover form. Uh, this uh, Mabadra is a currently about 13 to 8, I think. First run in 251 days. Could be completely anything. Uh, only the sixth run of his, um, her life, uh, Philly. Um you know, could have absolutely stacks in hand. Some of these races have worked out fairly well. The yard form is on fire. Um, the jockey is Andrea Rizzani is riding very well. Uh, the Roger Varian form, as we can see here, they are flying in 68% of rivals beaten. Um, always good, I suppose, to compare some of these stats to the year average for said trains. So you know if they're kind of performing above their yearly average. And as you can see, uh, kind of 9% high on the wind strike from play strike front uh play strike rate similar percentage rivals being a bit better um but 13 to 8 that's not the kind of odds i would play with certainly on a horse having first run in 251 days um and uh, will they be fresh will they be too keen also her first run at the course so i think there are valid reasons to oppose and if you get it wrong and this thing is got you know 10 15 pounds in hand relishes conditions then so be it um uh, the one I like, let me click Instant Expert, um, let's do handicaps again, let's just do the all weather again, let's just look at winning form, uh, you've got revolutionised down here, I have taken a look, he is £9 below his last winning mark, so that's interesting, uh, hasn't been in the best of form the last few runs, been held up, will there be a change of tactics, he is one to note in similar such conditions, when maybe he's showing a bit more form, but maybe that will be today, um, but uh, you know, standard uh, Chelmsford class 3, Seven furlongs are his conditions in handicaps. Uh, nine pounds below his last winning mark. I could use this as a quick example to use the profile at all. So you can uh, click on different horses um, to uh, dive in with this excellent profile at all as well. So you can click all these different race form characteristics down here. You've got loads of different things you can uh, click. And then you can just zone in on the goings. You can see here distance um so this is for revolutionize where they've performed well this blue highlight in today's conditions um tongue tie any headgear yet their actual weight they're carrying their odds range so all of his wins have been when sent off 17 to 2 or shorter so that might be worth something interesting to note um rest patterns all of his wins have been when returning within 15 to 30 days for revolutionize so that might be worth noting as well and some decent uh, profit levels there um he certainly is very well handicapped you've got times of year that they do well is he best catching in january february possibly has got a win in september and june so maybe nothing in that uh direction uh profile of the course the general configuration configuration of the track um so on and so forth does well at chelmsford does well at kempton windsor wolverhampton they're the four tracks he's won at so there's some different points there uh, we can note he's done very well under jason hart three from five four places marco's one on him david egan um andrea's one on him so all those different things you can use um and that's when i say that caveat of doing this through the cards i mean you could spend 
and many people having proper chunky bets will be spending you know half hour 40 minutes just on the one race as you should do to try and gather all the information you can um, but that's just an example of the profile at all i actually like sir oliver um uh, he was kind of five to one i suppose as a kind of each way option with three places um he yeah you can you know you can go through again whiz down and look at all these different uh the field size is just fine for him cheap piece is good weight is fine um the day's rest is good six from 13 nine places in 15 to 30 days so this is arguably uh one of the perfect spots for him although the place record and some of the others no bother um you've got all the different surface like i said the flat uh type of course chelmsford he's one from five three place this is all runs um Six from 18 since he moved to Chris Dwyer. One from two under Sylvester de Souza. Uh, so he gets on with him well. Uh, and you can dive into that profile at all uh, with handicap, uh, all weather. Uh, and then you can get the profile that will filter. So you can get all that different data down here, so on and so forth. Three from 10, six places in cheek pieces in all weather handicaps. So uh, all that kind of fun stuff you can flick through. Uh, like I said, I'm using this video as well to kind of uh, give you an example of... Um, Gigi's uh, the excellent Gigi's gold and the kind of things I think about so anyway uh yes Sir Oliver um he uh looked interesting to me um revolutionized interesting for those reasons stated but maybe at a point further down the line uh, but it'll be interesting to see what the market does uh, are they getting his mark down a bit further uh, but it was only a few starts ago in april he was running well under luke off 87 um held up in rear he does need a strong pace to aim at that might be the thing which affects whether he runs well or not so maybe he's interesting to a point i suppose again why i like sir oliver um he had him held last time he beat him had uh, revolutionized was five lengths further back i wasn't a hundred percent sure why that would flip of course he's two pounds lower and got a five pound claim so he's got a kind of um uh seven well i suppose he does have quite a weight swing uh from when they oh no he, no he doesn't he's only one pound oh yeah he does kind of have seven eight pound weight swing is that the reason why he may overturn those odds uh that length possibly possibly not i thought sir oliver age five um he's a winning he does know how to win and he knows how to win around chelmsford uh, i thought he was interesting another stat to note chris dwyer just his runners on the all weather in general in the last two years 21 from 98 33 places um plus 10 sp so a training to note on the sand i believe sylvester de souza i believe chris dwyer's wife is sylvester de souza's agent um and it's always interesting when he's booked on a Chris Dwyer horse uh, the trainer jockey combo in the last year that's a start I wanted to highlight regardless of what this horse does so Sylvester D'Souza riding for Chris Dwyer 7 from 24 12 places plus 10 within the last year uh, so a trainer jockey combo to note maybe uh, Sir Oliver doesn't do so well on the grass he um beat Carabana in this race here now Carabana on his next start was discussed the last race he then won so that form has been franked of course it'll be interesting to see what Carabana does in the previous race you would like him to run well to give you more confidence here so Oliver didn't seem to like Chester uh, not on fast ground anyway and got a bit outpaced later on but if he can return to this uh, form here which was only a couple of starts ago in early June um, return to Chelmsford return to seven furlong um, he won there stayed on very well posted a decent RPR 97 against that mark uh, he's only gone up one pound I thought there was no reason why he wouldn't run his race again pace wise is interesting is drawn wide this seven furlong start is from the shoots you do have quite a way for him to get out and tack across before the bend comes up so hopefully Sylvester will get him out and get him ambling across and he may end up tracking the Rob Milman horse um, come the bend but he should be in a prominent lead position provided he's not slow away and provided he doesn't get trapped wide um, but I thought Sir Oliver may be uh, the kind of value play at kind of fives or so um, when I was looking at this uh, a good hour hour or so ago now um he has been near with that nine to two uh was fives um so yes he's interesting revolutionized doesn't look fancied yet so all those different points i said about him especially in the market may be worth noting for him he will pop up again at some point from the mark he's found himself on in an all-weather handicap in the coming weeks no doubt um but yeah so oliver for me um Margrove's interesting to a point, but clearly doesn't take her racing too well. Um, 
uh, his racing too well, I should say. Uh, but maybe this return run can be ignored if he bounced back to some of this Wolves form uh, or some of this form here off kind of three pounds higher. He may mix it, but he does have the odd question. Uh, Sir Oliver looked the solid, if unspectacular one, I suppose. I thought he would run his race and that might be good enough uh, to nick another win from this sort of mark. But do note that trainer jockey combo, whatever he does. Um, 7.20, let's rattle on through. Um, power of states uh or let me just click your weather you'll see maybe with this line of green at the top why i was interested he has one off a mark three pounds higher so in fairness that mark hopefully won't stop him um we have a few we've got three horses running at chelmsford the, for the first time including the favorite is that a reason uh why um we should have could oppose him possibly uh see the shells first time here boss power first time here um so i suppose uh you know anything today might be interesting as well four pounds below highest winning mark um the course form might be a question i suppose um but certainly power of states i was struggling to work out why he was eight to one to some degree um he has found winning a bit more challenging i suppose but maybe he's now settled in uh, to hugo palmer's new base and they've worked out how to use facilities and train him um uh yeah so he does have the previous bat form i suppose what i thought interesting this run in june was his first run in a few months uh the front two were miles clear peter the great was a john gosden horse who has since followed up um so that was of some interest as well uh peter the great yeah you could see there uh won a uh new market class two handicap fairly well uh what that form works out to be we shall see but the front two that day were miles clear i thought if he repeated that run or built on it um dropped back into a class three uh he would do he might outrun his odds now this this run can be ignored to a point he dropped him to eight furlongs he got outpaced off the bend he traveled well um he hit a bit of travel and the jockey just not seemed to give up just let him coast home uh, i thought he hit the line there with plenty of running left um Interesting, he posted the same RPR as his mark, uh, having not really uh, had the run of the race or got the splits. Um, he now uh, keeps, maintains at class three level, uh, but uh, goes back up to 10 furlongs. The doiler jumps back on. Uh, he does very well uh, at Chelmsford. Obviously, plenty of well backed, but uh, in the last year, eight from 24, 14 places. Um, so he rides his track very well. Uh, Hugo Palmer's are going along fine. Uh, maybe you'd like to see more winners play strike rates okay. Uh, he does well when moving horses in distance. So that's, I think, on GD's metrics are kind of 20 to 25% moving horse in distance, um, either, uh, well, mainly up, uh, but either up or down. Um, but he knows when to do that. And of course, this horse is a course and distance winner. Um, that's the start I wanted to highlight. Uh, so these little report angles here. Uh, Hugo Palmer, James Doyle at Chelmsford in the last five years. 13 from 35, 23 places plus eight. That's another trainer-jockey combo worth noting. Um, and always those kind of things are a good starting point as well. Uh, so that's something you can pause note down again if you like your trainer-jockey angles. Uh, so hopefully this video is useful, even if I fail to mention a winner uh, is useful useful for your punting moving forward so uh, various reasons there including that instant expert um, the uh, horses uh, record at the course chart and click here four from nine six places um, three from eight five places in handicaps you normally get a run for your money uh, three from seven five places over ten furlongs here uh, so with any luck uh, he does run his race and that run here was his first run in 97 days hopefully he might strip a bit fitter and be a bit more on his game um, but I thought at what was let's have a look the 720 um, uh, yeah, he seems unfancy at the moment, so I'm not too fussed about eight to one, seventy and a half to. I suppose there's three places. There is a short price favourite. I certainly thought he looked as interesting as any of these others in this race, maybe excluding the favourite. Um, so you know, some of you have different approaches to each way, etc., so on and so forth. But given that course record and the step back up in trip, and James is back on, I'd be disappointed if he doesn't run his race, and if running his race doesn't put him in the mix here. Uh, Volcam did bolt up at Newcastle. It is his first run at Chelmsford. Um, will he get out pace will he find this course which is not as galloping and not as stiff anywhere near as Newcastle will he find this all happening a bit too much possibly um, 
uh, in fairness, had the Crouch Rises place okay. Uh, Rafe Beckett has a very good record here. That's another micro worth uh, or stat worth noting, maybe. Uh, Rafe Beckett at the course in the last year, 5 from 17, 17 places. Seven places, although plenty of them are short enough and sent off at short prices. You've got the Sire snippets here, interesting. Um, who's the Sire? Uh, Free Eagle. Uh, so he does pretty well on the flat or weather and middle distances. Um, so if you like your size and breeding, um, there's some solid numbers there that may be worth digging into a bit more, especially as all weather runners. Um, so again, when you flick through these kind of things, you can get different starting points for uh, digging within uh, sire angles and everything else, um, which you can use the uh, report angles and all sorts um, within GDs or if you've got other system building software. Uh, but yes, Volcan might well bolt up again. Uh, the market's suggesting so. He's just found his feet. Uh, a mark of 90 might not stop him. Will Chelms would be fine. Will he get outpaced by something? Will he handle the course at a slightly different surface? Um, remains to be seen. Can he back up the run? So I personally wouldn't wade in at 6-4. to four. Um, I am anxious about wading in in terms of opposing him because although he's got the odd question, you know, um, uh, yeah, he is the last time out winner who bolted up, who there could well be more to come. Uh, but I thought Power of Estates, especially if I'm trackside, as Doug will be maybe the interesting one there at the price. Um, the 750 I pass went pass on it's a maiden stakes 10 furlongs there are only five runners and um money's pouring on the fav uh there's what a second one here for frankie and john um both of those arrive in decent form unexposed as are they all uh but the other three have a few more questions than the two above but uh that wasn't a race i have any interest in playing in um or saying anything on um the 820 uh a smaller field here um this is trappy, uh, I suppose. I did kind of end up on the outside of the field, um, which, uh, as you can see there, Trinity Girl, um, who, if I click on those distances, so I can change the distances to what we look at, is the only one with proven stamina over this course uh, on the all-weather, I should say. Um, the other one is C. Appeal, who has said... Um, uh, 14 furlongs at Listal, but on the uh, turf, obviously. But in terms of all weather, uh, the only one with proven stamina over this trip or further, which I thought interesting, and the only course winner in the field. Um, uh, and you can see there the instant expert just on that basis alone, uh, only one pounds below last uh, above last winning mark. Um, was interesting enough I thought uh, I watched that last race here this was over slightly further she traveled very very well uh, the winner there kind of dictated the slow pace um, but uh, now drops back to 14 furlongs class three um, sorry has won at class three some questions over the level of form but this is a class four so at least has performed a higher class uh, Newcastle has won in class four that race worked out slightly better um, post a decent RP racing post uh, rating figure here an 86 uh, has gone up one pound the top speed figure is okay as well certainly when compared to some recent runs indicating a kind of maybe an uptick and upturn in form um, I didn't see a reason why she wouldn't run her race if I'm honest and move ran like this mark is within range and actually the fact she stays further may be no bad thing and hopefully George Bass uh, may make plenty of use of her at least knows her as well from that last run um the rest do have some questions Napa Tani off 88 days been gelded is he going to be fit will the gelding have worked um got questions uh, at the course I suppose has been beaten a couple of times um but is unexposed more unexposed than Trinity Girl as is in the breeze um but he needs to step up that was his first run a few days for Mick Appleby last time since April um so will this step up what will that do steps up down in class up in trip i did think that was interesting but there wasn't quite enough there for me just yet um arabian warrior interesting but again uh does step up in trip which might make uh, arabian warrior take another step uh forward will the visor work again uh was a question i suppose um maybe there's a question about the course as well 
has only run so so here before i wasn't scared i wasn't wanting to wade in the price um i should add there's another stat for you for those who want your little micro angles uh side bin Saral with last time out winners he does get them to hold their form 35 and 112 666 place in the last two years um plus 36 points profit 17 percent uh actual versus expected 1.17 so um 17% kind of above uh, what you'd expect, which is a uh, decent little figure um, and sh is indicating that um, there's value there. So any figure above 1.00 is indicating the horse are still performing above market expectations. And obviously, the bigger that number, uh, the better. Um, so there's still some value to be had in those on that sense, uh, on that score. Um, so, yes, I suppose uh, last time out winner again, unexposed the distance. Uh, can he back it up? Can he do it in a second time visor uh, and the course form? C Appeal has a few questions as well, especially uh, as yet unproven on all weather surfaces. Uh, so I thought this was looked an open race to a point. Maybe Bin Saros will now hack up having said that. Um, there's a bit of pace for Trinity Girl to trap, but can race prominently as well and does stay a little bit further uh, for all those reasons including instant expert uh, when I saw odds of um, kind of eight to one and seven and a half outside of the field I thought that was a bit odd uh, to my eyes um, and that's why I, I thought Trinity Girl may be uh, worth you know a small little nibble um, but in the context Arabian Warriors a last time out winner still unexposed in conditions Napa Tandy first run since gelding still un unexposed in conditions but like I said has to prove fitness has to prove the course has to prove stamina uh, but may improve for all of those things uh, and make three to one look a decent price but a bit too much guesswork there for me um sitting at home not knowing the yard not knowing how he's been working um or having you know trackside not going to be able to see him um i wouldn't back him at that price sat here uh personally um and maybe not at all but anyway i'm rabbiting on i thought trinity girl may be an interesting play there for those various different reasons and um i've kind of ended up on the favorite as he is at the moment here so gregory uh maybe you'll see for similar reasons as well another four-year-old plus handicap uh no scary three-year-olds but there are a lot of four-year-olds who uh, will still be growing still be maturing um but if i just click the instant expert uh handicaps on the all weather you may see why so gregory uh, jumped out to some degree here ticks every box the only course winner in the field in handicaps uh, and in total so he's the only winner at Chelmsford um, in the whole of the field and some of you watching this may put great value on course form and I wouldn't necessarily blame you for doing that um, uh, although of course I should say lots of horses do win uh, running at a course for the first time ever um, but that's an aside uh, but yes in handicaps like this proven in conditions is no bad thing um, so yes uh, you've got that whole line of amber green there uh, the nail gun are interesting to a point although not necessarily with the course form I can click these place stats as well um, and we do see lots of green and amber so that's suggesting there are lots of horses that have run well and placed in these conditions as you can see across this dashboard and you can pause and take a closer look i suppose uh, nothing down here is well handicapped in the sense of being below marks they're above last winning marks most of these but that may indicate that some of them are still open to improvement as well uh, some will still be lightly raced but if i just click on those winnings uh, tab there um and yes yeah, so he was interesting enough uh, he was interesting on the speed ratings perspective as well uh some you know decent figure there just as added information i suppose um pace uh, was interesting um uh, hopefully gets him a bit handier. It was a mild concern, I suppose. These are organised from draw, so you can obviously one is drawn against the inside rail. This being a left-handed course, just go from inside out. Um, there might be a bit of pace here because this one out wide goes forward, and now going to goes forward, and Sylvester and um, Kieran will be conscious not to get trapped, so they might blast out and use a lot of energy getting out and across, as may the Dunnet horse maybe. So. Hopefully Sir Gregory sits a bit more prominent and just tracks that pace and picks them off. Um, and he has got first time cheek pieces, which may help. He's also down in class. Uh, the other thing I should do, let's just go on his profiler. Um, Sir Gregory, let's just have a look here. Uh, he is, um, let me just go on all form. Uh, well, let's just go on all handicaps. Uh, you can see he is... Um, best on all weather surfaces is yet to actually win on turf uh 
class six all these wins are class six all these handicap wins are class six the weight's fine um he both his wins have been when nine to two or shorter so he kind of ticks that box uh so far day's return not too worried about there's been the odd placed effort um although maybe he's starting to go off the boil we shall see um but he is in okay form uh yeah he's on poly track so both his career wins uh handicap wins on uh poly track those wins at chelmsford and kempton um Two from 11, five places for Mick Appleby. Two from seven, four places under Theodore Ladd. So he clearly gets on with the jockey well. Um, if I just go back to him here, uh, what do we want to highlight? Um, we can see various bits and pieces of his form here. I thought this was interesting. So Chelmsford, the last time he ran in conditions, Chelmsford, six furlong, class six handicap, um, uh, kept on strongly final under Theo of uh, three is five, it was five pounds lower. Uh, I just did want to highlight that the form had worked out well. Um, uh, he beat a five year old here who won on his next start off 67. Uh, the third, the Stuart Williams horse off 63, won his next start as you can see here. Class six handicaps, but uh, did well. Um, Stone Circle for Michael Bell won two. Well, it took a little while to click, it wasn't until he, um, yeah, but he won then uh, on his third and fourth start since then. So boosted that form. He beat him off 62 at the time. Um, Mr. Fairs has placed and upheld the form um, from a place perspective. So that form is decent. Um, then he dropped back to five furlongs here, was outpaced a bit. I think um, certainly looks best over six then they ran him on turf for the last three runs if I just click him here I'll be going on plenty long enough but he's zero from five zero places on the grass um, so maybe we can now ignore those uh, races there on the turf but he was still only beaten two lengths and he got outpaced a bit um, that was at a higher class so now uh, Theo Ladd is back on for the first time since that win um, he's dropping in class he's got some cheek pieces to help he trapped the leaders in this race, so like hopefully he will get out and trap the leaders. Um, he is off 62. How old is he? He's a four-year-old. Um, he hasn't proved yet that he cannot win from this mark, if that makes sense, really. Not not since he has, um, well, certainly not since he's gone to Mick Appleby. He did run off this kind of mark a couple of times uh, when with Julia Fielder, but maybe he's improved, and he is only four, uh, so he's strengthening up. He's getting a bit older. Um I can't, there's not enough evidence yet that this mark is beyond him. Uh, so maybe today will tell us um, he wasn't beaten far in this race off uh, the same mark. So uh, this race may tell us, but I thought he looked decent. I made all of that decision and conclusion before then going to look at the odds and had some kind of idea. And I actually thought uh, 10 to 3, 3 to 1, for all those reasons stated, was decent enough. Um, and yeah, Mick Applebee's are going along fine, and he does fine at the course. But the course, the horse, the course and distance winner, so the trainer's record at the track doesn't so much matter in that context. Um, given it's the same trainer um, that his win came under. So uh, yeah, for all those reasons, I can't say I've gone in great depth on all the others uh, through this race. Uh, now, Gunner, I suppose, Gunner, just Ivan Furtado's form was a bit off-putting to some degree. Um, I should say Sylvester de Souza does ride this track very well uh, as well, but of course has plenty of rides and plenty of well-backed. Um, doesn't have course form or, or as good as Sir Gregory anyway. All those reasons stated, uh, Sir Gregory was the one for me in that race. Um, having wanted to try and do a short video, I've ticked around to 47 minutes, but that's just demonstrating, I suppose, that is a seven-runner card. Um, I've tried to highlight various trainer jockey angles, um, different trainer angles etc that you will find useful moving forwards if you want to note them down um, for Chelmsford uh, even if every horse I've mentioned falls out the back of the TV but I am interested uh, very interested to see how Sir Gregory goes I do think 10 to 3 is uh, decent enough hopefully he can run an almighty race of course there's a chance that he hates the first time cheek pieces but we will trust in the excellent Mick Appleby um, and I also thought uh, Laurentia, that was five and a half, so I will be thoroughly disappointed if she clearly runs her race and is out of the places. I thought she was decent. Um, I suppose those two might be the two that I was... Uh, most excited about uh, for all the various different reasons stated and their odds uh carabana's okay i can't say 11 to 4 3 to 1 overpriced necessarily but if i was at the track i think he'd be the one i was backing uh sir oliver is um 
interesting also uh five to one from an each way i'll be disappointed if, if he gets back to that form two starts ago if he's out the places he is open to attack from something a bit better handicapped i suppose that's what makes me a bit uh so so not so so about him but um be interested in any more money for margob who may leave that debut behind and uh be transformed for that return and return to all weather possibly um Good to see the varying horses a bit weak at this stage. Um, so, yeah, uh, maybe, yeah, Sir Oliver's interesting. Maybe Margo up to a point as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, what else did I say? Power of Stars is interesting. Uh, I can't work out uh, why it was so weak. I would like to see a little bit of money. But, yeah, now Sevens um, could give the favourite something to think about. Uh, passed on that race, as could, uh, yeah, Trinity Girl, I thought, um, 15 to 2, 8 to 1, a big price also, but of course, 3 at much shorter price, taking out a big chunk in the market. So I may be very wrong there, but never be put off by the outsider of the field. But with that said, as I tick round 2. Uh, 50 minutes uh, thanks for watching uh, hopefully I've said something useful uh, do post a comment down below um, either on YouTube um, uh, yeah or send a uh, reply to email if you've got any questions or whatever else um, there is a link also in the banner in the email and the link to YouTube as always you can take a 30 day trial of the excellent GG's goal for just one pound I believe um, and if any of that I've showed you there you think may add to your betting or help um, in your kind of uh, enjoyment and analysis of this great game moving forwards then do dip your toe in and have a go because it really is an excellent piece of kit for those reasons I've demonstrated of course now Everything I've mentioned may fall out the back of the TV and I will regret not going into even more depth in some of these uh, low-grade handicaps. But it is what it is. We only have so much time. Uh, and with that said, uh, yes, thanks for watching. Hope you found this video useful and interesting to some degree. Uh, and until the next time, this is Josh from RacingTheProfit.co.uk saying thanks for watching. Bye for now. Take care and speak soon.